you can dream about things, but you have to dream and people will tell you it's impossible, in fact. And then you go ahead and prove them wrong. I was a young man of eight years old. I was in Egypt. My mother was very sick and she had a fungal infection almost on her deathbed. There was no treatment in Egypt for her and we had to find a, a pilot, a friend of my grandfather, who could bring in the medicine from the United States. And we, my mother took that medicine and much to my surprise, she was uh, basically cured. And I decided to dedicate my life to finding cures for uh, diseases. I decided to do, uh, to do something that, uh, that could have an impact on people's health. I wanted to deal with serious medical problems. We lived happily in Egypt for many years. The situation in Egypt was not very good, not only for Jews, but also in general for rich Egyptians. Unfortunately, we had to leave because of Egyptian nationalism that occurred, and we were basically almost expelled of Egypt, and we had to go and live in a refugee camp uh, to be able to survive. President Nasser needed money, and I guess he found a way to do it is to take from the rich. And the idea was to take from the rich and give to the poor, but unfortunately, instead of doing that, he built up his military. So he just come back from Agami, which is a beautiful beach. Uh, we spent our weekends there as my family, and we found our house locked up, sealed, our bank accounts frozen. We were forced to go to a hotel, and we had to pay the hotel ourselves, and we were given, as a family of four, 20 Egyptian pounds a week to live on, from our own money, by the way my own bank account. I, I couldn't go to school for six months uh, because we, my father could not afford to pay the school anymore. And basically from that point onwards, we had no choice but to leave the country. I had friends, uh, you know, Jewish friends, Christian friends, Coptic friends, uh, Palestinian friends, Egyptian friends, Saudi friends. You know, we, we were all of big family and suddenly we got dispersed. I was too young, we were going on a boat and, uh, but I didn't realize we were gonna end up in a refugee camp. <laughs> we had no money, we had nothing, and we were happened to be Italian nationals and the Italian government took us. I got highly educated, thank God, and was able to come to the United States and be able to study here further. And I always had Egypt on my mind. My uncle, who actually was born in Egypt, came to the United States in 1948 and he became a world-class herpes virologist, so I had that inspiration. My career started with herpes viruses, uh, which is also a major problem in children. Uh, when a child has herpes, it can kill the baby, and that's a real problem, of course. HIV came along and I couldn't just sit around and do nothing. Now remember that hepatitis C is a relatively new virus. It was discovered in 1989. We realized that hepatitis C is a huge problem globally uh, in the United States, more than 3.5 million people have hepatitis C. In Egypt, oh, more, than, more than 14 million people. Uh, and it's a global problem. People die, but they die slowly. It's a silent killer. And we had to find a solution. The fact that I had all the training, I was in optimum position to be able to develop drugs for hepatitis C. In fact, I never received any funding, any support for my work on hepatitis C, but I realized the importance of that uh, virus and from that I decided to dedicate my life to finding a cure for hepatitis C. We really were very very far away from a cure for hepatitis C. The tremendous army of people was was involved in discovery and development of of this molecule. It's not, it was not just me. With a lot of work and intuition uh, we were able to find a cure for hepatitis C, a drug that can actually cure a disease and for the first time in history of mankind were able to cure people who have hepatitis C. I was asked by the um, Egyptian ambassador to come to Egypt to visit Egypt and try to help them. You know, I needed to heal myself. I needed to heal from what happened to my family while we were in Egypt. I was 13 years old when I left, and I still speak a bit of broken Arabic, but I do speak Arabic and I know a lot of the culture the jokes. Egypt is basically in my DNA. That I cannot help that. Going back to Egypt was really special. Uh, and, and you know, memories came, came flooding. But it, my first visit was the toughest one. I've rekindled some friendships from my old school days. I work with uh, 
companies in Egypt to teach them how to make the drug very early on and gave them the formula how to make it. But I was able to convince uh, the company to provide low-cost medicines to Egypt. They couldn't, certainly could not afford to pay thirty or $60,000 per treatment. Today we have treatment in Egypt of less than $120 for a whole course of treatment. Today in Egypt we cured probably several million people and the numbers keep increasing year after year. The biggest reward is uh, getting letters from people who have been cured, including Egyptian friends who have been cured and telling me how much more vigor they have in their life and less fear about dying and now they don't have hepatitis C. So you should see the joy and that makes me happy too.